All right. Can you hear me? Colleagues? Okay, thank you. So it's so exciting to, to be here with all of you. And thank you, first of all, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Angelica Hurtado. I'm with San Bernardino County uh, Superintendent of Schools, Program Manager for English Learner Programs. And I want to introduce also and give my colleague an opportunity for her to introduce herself. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Rosemary Heider. I'm Curriculum Coordinator under Angelica for EL Biliteracy Programs. And we work uh, great together. So we uh, put our minds together and we said, you know, we, we need to uh, put something out there for our courageous educators, um, teachers of English learners and how to get the year started. So here we go and we're going to get started. And we thank you for being here. So we start, you've probably seen this a lot. We have webinar norms. So by now you all already know that um, make sure that you're muted and also that you can use the chat feature to give your comments, any questions. Uh, feel free to also put your, your district or your uh, LEA organization. And uh, remembering that, yes, we have always kept our meeting etiquette. We've been good about that and everybody um, is an expert now with our um, or trying, we're trying to get better at the, the technology piece. But this is our, our, these are our webinar norms. Also, notice that we have a link at the at the top here for the Bitly the Bitly link that where you can always go and get the, the resources. Um, and the PowerPoint will be um, provided for you at uh, at the end of the presentation. Maria is our um, support staff. Thank you, Maria, for helping. Um, and she's going to be sending um, everything that we are covering today to you through email. So we have four goals for today. Um, first of all, we want to make sure that, that we include um, considerations for the first day of school. We know that some of you already started your school year, but you're planning to start your school year as well. So we're going to uh, show some of those. And then also uh, developing that student relationship from a distance. We know that this has been a very difficult time for a lot, a lot of us, uh, no matter what role you play in education. So. We know that the uh, relationship building with our students is so, so critical at this time, uh, considering what we've all been through, uh, and students um, most of all. We want to also make sure that you, you, you grab and go, that we include some grab and go um, uh, ideas, activities, so that you can just go straight to it and, and implement. Most of all and most important, we also want to include a, a part for taking care of the teacher. Without the teacher, if the teacher's not well, there's no instruction. So we're going to cover that piece as well. We want to share with you that a lot of what we're sharing today is it's correlating to the National Standards for Quality Online. Um, uh, teaching. And so for some of you, I'm not sure if you have uh, learned about these, but I, I learned them as of March. Our colleague, Sano Patel, who does our educational technology, she shared these with us. And as we looked at our PowerPoint, there are eight components here in the standards. We're going to give you also under the resources section a link to go there. But we're all uh, aligned in this presentation. It covers pretty much all, all of the eight components here. So that's just something for you to keep make a note of. We want to start off with a little menti.com more or less question. So because we know that we're also focusing today on English learners, we want to ask you how many English learners do you anticipate to have on your roster this year? Or maybe in the past, how, how many have you had if you, if you don't have your class now or if you don't have a roster how many have you had in the past but if you do know how many please go into menti.com and as you enter your responses it's going to look something like this where where um you can enter um you know just use one space there to enter the the number and we'll try it out see if that if if that works so start entering it and i'll go i'll go back to um the um, presentation. So let's see. It's really hard to um, get back into oh, the code. They they yeah. need the code. 
Uh, it is 1280.06. I'll put that in the chat. Okay. And I'm looking for my presentation here. I don't know where it went, but I'll go in there again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. This is all about learning about, you know, the technology piece here. All right, so there's your code. And then hopefully we can get to our cloud and start looking at the numbers that are coming in. So we have 18, 15, five. Wow, 45. Woo. Twelve hundred. Okay. Uh -huh. Wow. So we certainly can see. Keep keep entering your numbers, but we can certainly see that no matter what program you teach or what content area, we sure know that English learners are in our classrooms at least one. <laughs> Thank you. So you can see more or less what your colleagues have. What are their numbers? We have uh, twenty two seventy six. It's the mm -hmm. highest that we've seen. So thank you for, for sharing that with, with us. Um, we're gonna go back to our PowerPoint here. And um, I'm gonna ask Rosemary to, to uh, share a, an, amazing, an amazing resources that we, we are using today. Yes, so this is the book that we've kind of um, referred to throughout our PowerPoint today. And it is just an amazing resource for this time that we're in. And I just wanted to read you the introduction, just an excerpt from the introduction, so to kind of get us going for what we're doing here today. So it starts by saying, teachers have embraced their responsibility to impact learning irrespective of the format of school. Let's seize on what we have learned to improve schooling in any format, whether face-to-face -face or from a distance. Teachers are amazing, and the public is realizing that in, this substantial, in substantial ways, educators can motivate students to engage in activities that make the struggle of learning joyful. Teachers provide feedback at the right time and in the right way to each student, and teachers do not do the work for the students. Teachers know where to go next and how to balance the breadth and depth of ever varied school curriculum. Teachers utilize their know-how to invest in the after-school work of grading, preparing lessons, developing resources, and going to professional learning and meetings like we're doing today. So we're thinking about, so let's move from crisis teaching that we were doing from March to April to June and to a cohesive instruction across all platforms. So that's what we're focusing on today. Okay. Yeah, and certainly our teachers are very important and we commend them for the, the great work and the courage that they've had to, to embark in this journey. Okay, so let's start with the, uh, our first section which deals with the considerations for the first day of school. Um, you're gonna see that um, a lot of what we're talking about today in this section, it's gonna remind you of when you're actually face-to-face -face with the students. So the recommendation is that you develop a classroom management plan for distance learning, where you include your norms, your agreements, procedures, you might include schedules that you and your students will use. And remembering that classroom manage, the classroom management plan is different than the behavior management plan. So when you think about your classroom management plan, it really deals with the procedures that you wanna see your students doing, the routines, and, and think about the expectations for all of your students in your class or at secondary if you have different classes, but, but think about those things. And then also, also thinking about what are your beliefs on how distance learning should also occur? So, um, you, you know, since March, I know you've, you've been added, you've been 
very active with, with your distance learning. Um, you've had a little taste of it, but now what is your belief? What did you notice that worked? What did you notice that it didn't work? What do you want to change in this new school year? And then how do you want to build that community and equity with your students where all of your students have access to, to, to your instruction, to the resources, to the core? Um, and once you build that classroom management plan, uh, just make sure that it's clear to any stakeholder that may say, hey, you know, what are you including in your manage classroom management plan? Oh, here it is. So something very clear where anybody that takes it can, can really understand it. Um, and then think about posting it in your digital wall or on your web, web page. Always remembering to communicate in the home language of the students. Uh, remember that there's different apps like Google Translate, and I know that there's other, other uh, popular uh, translation apps that you can use as well. Rosemary, do you have any other ones for translation that you can recommend? I know that we've, we've done a lot of that too. Yeah, no, you've covered them pretty okay. much. <laughs> okay, so then um, we, we included an example of a high school teacher as she was thinking about the virtual classroom norms. These are some of the ones that she selected with her class. Um, so thinking about being open-minded and being adaptable, talking about the safe space and you know embracing the learning. Um, and most of all, the last one talks about understanding that learning it is, it is a process that requires patience uh, with self and others and specifically in these times since we're doing it virtually. So that's an example there. And you can just get creative and think of what you would want to do. So we wanna show you um, a very short video about uh, a teacher who talks about Yam Yamali Sanchez. She shares on, on her, how she developed her class agreement. So we'll share this video with you. <laughs> The agreements that we came up with during distance learning were developed organically. Um, it was very interesting to see how students reacted to just be on, being on the computer. And one of the first issues that developed was that certain students weren't turning on their cameras and other students would be saying things like, hey, I can't see your face. So um, we had a conversation about how uh, we had to agree that if you wanted to share, you know, your face and let us know and be a part of the class and just kind of be involved in that way, it would be amazing for me to see your face and for your classmates to see your face. But if you chose to not participate, that was also okay because there were other reasons why, maybe, right? So um, with the eighth graders all coming together and agreeing that we weren't going to ask whether some student, why some students had their, their screen on and others didn't, that was one of the first agreements that we decided on. Another one was that initially we first were talking and we're excited to see each other and everybody wants to talk at the same time. And we had to agree that we would wait to let other people finish and then, you know, talk one at a time. We also developed or discovered that on Zoom, you can have little emojis. So um, students were noticing that they could do the emojis and they would agree that if they agreed with a classmate, they would, you know, put the thumbs up or put a smiley face or um, a lot of them did a lot of like the head nods or the, the snapping, like, but extremely overtly so that everybody would know that this is what was happening, that they were agreeing. Um, so just kind of being patient, waiting for others to finish talking, not cutting each other off. Being present was another one that we um, agreed on because we're not face-to-face -face. so a lot of students would have their cell phones out like this and you know we had a conversation about we're we're here for an hour 30 minutes 45 minutes whatever however long you know that session is but understanding that we want to be present and what that means and we went around and kind of agreed with what does being present mean and, and a lot of students decided to um you know maybe not having my phone out maybe paint you know agreeing and using the emojis and just participating more. So that was another agreement. So the, the three agreements that my class have, or sorry, four, is snapping and using the emojis to um, 
to support each other. The other one is not asking why people don't have their cameras on because, you know, we have to respect each other and understand that we don't all have the same privilege. And uh, the third one is being patient and waiting for, a, waiting for your turn. And the fourth one is uh, being present and not no phones, just kind of for that 45 minutes, an hour, whatever time, um, we are just present with what we're doing. So those are the few agreements. Okay. So are there any comments in the chats in regards to, to the video or anything that we've covered so far? No, I just see Heather uh, is looking for the PowerPoint. Heather, I'll check back again. We did put the drop the PDF of the PowerPoint in the drive. Um, okay. Well, thank you, Rosemary. Oh, also, uh, Nolan asked, what if the whole class decides to not turn on the camera? Oh, well, you know, the, this slide talks a little bit about that. Maybe not answering your whole entire question, but um, there are some, you know, because there some students might have a certain reason um, why they can't turn on the, the camera. Um, I would also consult with your district, which is our third bullet here, um, in terms of what are their requirements. I know that I, back in March and April, some districts were not allowing uh, students to put, up, put on their camera. I know specifically of a district that did not require the teachers to have the students um, show their background. Um, so, but now, you know, it's important that we see our students or maybe they might just put their school picture. You know, if they have a reason that they don't, they can't use a camera, then offer them this, you know, put up, put up your school picture. We need to see and identify who you are. You're important to the class. We need to, to make sure that you're part of us. So something like along those lines where you have that discussion with your students and you have them give, give input. Why is it important for us to see each other, you know, instead of just, um, just having a blank, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, something to stare at where you don't have an image of someone. Um, connecting the name to the face. So talking about the importance of that, because they are important. You know, we, if, if they do have that ability or that, uh, you know, to put the camera on, then it is important to connect the name to the, to the face. For those students that cannot put the camera, let's say is a student who wears a jihad and cannot, you know, at home they take it off, well, um, then that's a good reason. So things like that, where you need to just talk to your class. I hope I answered your question. Let me know. Yes, and the teachers are, are exchanging information in the chat, so they're providing some examples. And again, you are the teacher, and if um, it is something that's a, not a district directive, like Angelica said, you, are, you have the um, autonomy to make sure it's your class and set those, it's kind of your classroom management. You know, sometimes it's appropriate, sometimes it's not. Um, and then depending, individualizing for the students if they do have a reason why they can't. Like uh, there are teachers that have shared stories that uh, because of the small apartment, the student is actually sitting in the shower or in their closet to attend class. So you may want to do it um, individualized basis if it's, that's the case. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And keep those coming uh, comments coming in the chat. We, we really care about that. And please uh, share with each other because you guys have uh, a lot more experience yeah. out there. <laughs> I'll have a, a, some time as well. So, so we talked about, I believe in this earlier slide, we talked about the distance learning and that it means having a combination of synchronous and asynchronous learning. And believe me, those two words for me were new vocabulary words back at the end of March. So I had to really learn them. And so here we have an example of how, what are the advantages for English learners and disadvantages in these two type of cyber learning modes. So with synchronous, we know that it's in real time, it's virtual interaction. And the advantages for our ELs is that the students can see the social cues, they can see the teacher modeling, you know, they're negotiating meaning, it's student to student interaction. The disadvantages, of course, is that sometimes we may speak too fast or they might need more time to process or there may be a confusion with the virtual scheduling. The asynchronous 
it's not in real time um, and in the virtual interaction, but you may you might have that electronic folder with resources for them. So that allows the advantages of VLs for their English learners is that you can they can go back and look at the repeated videos that you've included in, in that resource folder. They might even go back and, and listen to that audio that you included, maybe of a reading of a passage or a text. You can also do some translation there as well and keep that in their folder. So different, different things that you can do for your ELs. Um, and of course, the disadvantage is that if there is a loss of social cues and negotiating meaning, but you know what, you're trying your best and you're including all of that. So, so that's the difference between those two. And then we also included some um, recommendations or some things that you might want to share with uh, to drop off the cups and then Jersey Mike. Oh, fine. We just ran in and put a Maria. You might want to mute. Yeah. Can you mute Maria? <laughs> yeah. So at first I thought it was a question. <laughs> uh, so um, anyway, so this, these are lists that you can talk to your students about. Like, look at this first list. Getting ready for your class meeting. It gives them like really very structured recommendations, you know, about choosing their, their uh, workspace, uh, talking with their family about having it quiet and not to be disturbed, uh, making sure you have a, a light and so that your classmates can see you. Stuff, you know, little things like that that make a big difference. And you can go on and read the others, you know, like during class meetings, make sure you raise your hand or your, the button that, you know, that raises the hand. Make sure you ask questions for clarification. At the end of the meeting, review the goals. Did we achieve them? So there's plenty here for you to look at and for you to choose and then start building your own as well. So we, we also want to talk about developing and, and, and develop and teach organization and mainly procedural routines. So maybe providing weekly and monthly schedules for your families and students. These are great, great ways to keep in touch with your families. You know, sometimes we say, well, the family is, is, is too busy, it's abs they're absent, you know, parents are working very hard. Um, this is a good way um, to keep that communication with them and include them in this process. And then, um, Maybe, maybe to ease the anxiety of your students, provide a daily schedule at the beginning of the class. Um, considering your English learners that, you know, they, they may need more visuals on the, on the chart, maybe some infographics on there so to help them maneuver through that. Um, uh, you know, and come to an agreement of what signals do you want to have with your students when you're teaching. Um, so, you can, you know, see that there's, you know, you're talking about accessing the digital materials for your students. How are they going to access that? Are you going to have clear directions or are you going to assume that they, they already know everything? Well, our students are at different levels, right, of technology being savvy. And so uh, some might not have internet, some will, some don't, you know, so depending on their situation. And then making sure that you have clear procedures for them. You know, how are they going to submit the assignments? How are you going to look for it um, as they turn it in? So different ideas that you can consider. And remember, these are suggestions, but you can build on all of this. I wanted to show you something here that um, one of the teachers that I know uh, shared with me just yesterday. Um, it's like a communications card, and what she did is she wrote her information on there, but then she went ahead and laminated it, and then she put a, a magnet, she glued a magnet on the back so that parents can put it on the, on the refrigerator. And so that way parents have access to the number, to the, to the website of the teacher, to, to the email. And then this, is, this was taken from Teachers Pay Teachers. And that's where this came from. So we have an example of uh, a teacher talking about how he provides an overview of his weekly schedule. Um, I'm going to play maybe maybe a minute of it or so, um, and then you guys feel free to go back and, and check out the rest of the of the video. <laughs> On Monday, two assignments will be released to the students via their uh, online learning platform. Uh, one, which is a reading, uh, and the second being a video lesson. 
where I record myself uh, going over a PowerPoint, um, and I turn that video into a play posit where questions, guided questions about the PowerPoint, um, are embedded directly onto the video itself. This eliminates the need for a Google form or Google doc um, where students uh, don't have to go back and forth between the video and the answer sheet. All the questions are directly right uh, on the video itself. Uh, the reading, however, uh, will need a Google form uh, that coincides with it with the guided questions um, and students will have access to that right below um, <clears throat> the reading itself. Uh, so Monday, two assignments will be will be given um, <clears throat> a reading and a, and a video lesson. On Tuesday, that is a work day for the students. Um, if the students didn't have the opportunity to log in um, to the online platform on Monday, Tuesday is their day to catch up um, and make sure they have uh, everything completed. Um, on Wednesday, we hold a Zoom session, a Zoom meeting with the students. Um, it's encouraged that all students uh, show up to this and come to this, and this is for um, clarifying questions, this gives uh, me an opportunity to have that face-to-face -face interaction um, and dive a little deeper into the topic that in which we're going over for the week. Um, it also <clears throat> gives the students some time um, to ask questions if they're not if they're not understanding anything, if they need to, need to help with something, things like that. This is this Zoom meeting on Wednesday would be the time. Um, also. On so I stopped it now, but you guys can continue watching it. You're going to get all the links to the, to the videos as well. Just for sake of time, um, I'm going to keep going. Any, any comments in the chat yet? No, Ed. And um, when you do receive the PowerPoint, the links are live on each slide. So when yes. you just touch the slide, it'll take you there. It'll take you there, totally. OK. Now, we've, we've uh, kind of talked a, a more about secondary, but this is for elementary teachers. You can also talk to your students about those agreements in terms of the video chats. So this is what we found in there where um, they do the MAC, where you know they talk about the movement, like sit, sitting at, at the computer, sitting with their phone or tablet, um, uh, the activities, you know, when they, you get, they gotta use their eyes for watching, ears for listening. Um, the bottom talks about the conversation noise level, level zero, while the mic is muted and, you know, raising their hand to speak. So that's, those are just some examples. And you might just build your own, your own visuals with your own um, agreements with your students. So in summary, this is just kind of something you want to keep in mind. Um, make sure that you, you greet your students as they come into the virtual classroom. Uh, make sure that you personalize their space. Maybe you want to use uh, uh, word clouds with their names so that they start owning that, that time with you. Um, post their work maybe to reflect their efforts. And then also um, make sure that you pronounce their name correctly. So practice ahead of time so that when that time comes, you know how to to say their names um, and per perhaps maybe elementary students or younger students, you know, feel free to start the, the year with songs and chants and, and share time. You know, how was your summer? Start, start building that report with them. And maybe for older students, you know, interview each other and, and, and uh, in pairs and collaboratively maybe, you know, create a, a document with questions or they can write an essay, things like that. So just different ideas where you can, you you can build on. So we want to connect that all that we've been talking about, it, it, it's also included in the California English Learner Roadmap. And the English Learner Roadmap is, is a, it's a policy that was passed by the State Board of Education. And it's a guide on how to um, implement English Learner programs to the best um, the ultimate, right, the ultimate level. And so today we just want to share principle one because that's, that talks about setting the, the environment for the students and beginning the year and every year with, with thinking about all the assets that our students bring to us to the classrooms and being responsive to their needs. So I want to uh, just invite you to see if you can read um, what principle one is all about and as you read, I would like for you to just start putting key words and, and words that resonate with you into the chat so Rosemary or Maria can start reading them out loud. Because that's important. 
uh, flexibility. Mm -hmm. Autonomy, scaffolds. Yep, very important. Culturacity. Judges are valued and affirmed. Very good, yes, so important. Inclusive, respectful, full participation, socio-emotional, strategies, empathetic. Safe, caring. Those are all key words and powerful adjectives when you think about building that environment for your students, no matter if it's online or face-to-face. -face. Very important for your English learners to feel safe and welcomed. Thank you for participating. I'm gonna move us right along. Um, this is a summary of actually principle number one. A lot of the words that you, you um, shared, you know, they're embedded in, in these important points under principle one. Notice also that we gave you a live link to the CDE web, web page where you can find more descriptions of each principle. And then this is an EL road, uh, roadmap hub where if you click on it, this is what you're going to see. And it, there's resources for all our, our stakeholders here. And if you scroll down, you have a plethora of resources, whether it's just the facts about the English Learner Roadmap or if you just want a little card, a trifold card or a video, they're all, they're all in here. So you can you know, just browse through there and go there and, sh and share them if, if you would like as well and learn more about it. So we wanna uh, now give you some time. We gave you lots of information already and we wanna give you some time to discuss with your groups, maybe a, a three minute uh, discussion where you can share about um, your norms, how important they are, your routines. If you do not have a plan right now, what would you like to include now that you've seen some information? So Maria is gonna start the groups. Maybe if you wanna take a little uh, screenshot of this, so you know what to discuss in your groups and we'll put you into your groups and bring you back in three minutes so that we can share a few uh, highlights of your discussion. So hopefully you're seeing your, your, uh, what group you're going to. Maria or Rosemary, is it working? Yes, yes, okay. they're all, the most have okay. been already placed. They're slowly going. Okay, and then the groups. I, don't, I don't need to put a timer, right? Maria, you have it on the automatic. Yeah. Okay, great. The downfall about it is what I'm noticing is the timer is for three minutes and it, it starts as soon as I hit start room, meaning oh, okay. if you're taking oh. a while to come in, it's already uh, time to come back. Okay, okay. <laughs> Is there a way to add another minute? <laughs> yeah, no, I'll do it next time we do breakout rooms. Okay, sounds good. Thank you for noticing that. Uh-huh, yeah, I just noticed that. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, there's 21 people that are still not assigned to a group, I think. No, they're all assigned. They're just oh, there are, okay. yeah. Because it tells me who's not joining and who's. <laughs> oh, got it, got it. <laughs> well, hopefully they can join because they can get ideas totally from other colleagues. What do Maria, you uh, Maria, but just make sure that no one's sitting in a group by themselves. No, yes. they're not. Okay, okay. Yeah. At least they have one person to talk to. Yeah, there's like 14 in each group. I did okay. not have breakout rooms. I think okay. How's my pace, Rosemary? Oh, yes, it's very nice. Okay, I'm trying not to take too long on each slide, but yeah. there's a lot to talk about. <laughs> there is. <laughs> but I want to keep, keep note of the time, too, that we finish on time. I think we're okay, because we're yeah, moving into... Fine. 
I think we're doing good. Okay. Uh, there's about, like, people, there's people walking by. I think this room was assigned to something. And so people have been opening the doors and coming oh, in. Oh. <laughs> it was quiet in the morning when I had the first meeting. So, so I turned it off. So we'll, we'll see. I, mean, I put in use and put a sign. Okay, I'm closing all the breakout rooms. Oh, they, yeah. Okay. Oh, what's cool is, okay, it does give you another 60 seconds to come oh, back. Good. So they're coming back. So I'm going to ask them to, to maybe uh, uh, share to, um, well, I don't know. Maybe they can put it in the chat. Rosa, in the chat, yeah. You can share, yeah. Maybe we'll do about four, five, five, six or so. Okay. Important points. Let me know when to begin, Maria, when they're all back. Okay, let's see. Not all are back right now. They're going to, yeah, we got like 15 seconds and they're all going to come back, whoever hasn't came back yet. That means there's good conversations happening. <laughs> I think they're going to have another time another opportunity okay uh, they're all it's getting, coming back. It's getting loud in the hallway again <laughs> let me know when they're all in almost okay looks like we're all coming back and we have most of our colleagues in the room now um you know what i i know this was an important um time for you just to talk to each other. Would you mind just putting in like maybe highlights of what came out from your uh, from your group discussion if and Rosemary can read it off the chat, please start putting in there. Things that you uh, you want your other colleagues to know. Feel free to read them Rosemary. Okay. Uh, poor connectivity was an issue. Oh. Also, students coming in late. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's that's another thing to think about. Uh, checking in with students to see how they're doing versus just jumping into instruction. Nice. Importance of background considerations as we're not allowed Zoom, so the background features on like Google Meet. Yes, you know, they're touching on, a, on other things that are coming up in the presentation so that they're on their way. Yes, very good. Very, very good. One last one. Uh, parents being less than casual in the background. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, yeah, I'll share later. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I don't know what that means, if you can explain. <laughs> Less than casual. Uh, probably not in their Sunday best walking around, maybe in the background. I don't know. <laughs> maybe in a, in a shirt, maybe shorts and tank top, or maybe not having a shirt on or something like that, maybe. That's what comes to my mind. And uh, I do one see one. I do see one that says we're all stressed. And so we do have some... Um, oh a focus for teachers and well-being at the later half of our yes okay. PowerPoint. I'm, I'm gonna thank you so much I appreciate it I'm gonna move us right along and let's see okay so thank you for that let's go ahead and and so we finished with that section let's go ahead and go into talking about developing the teacher-student relationships from from a distance so um, if you may recall building on your own uh, experiences, when, when you think about your building the relationships with your students or when you see other teachers talking to, to students, what are the three top indicators you use to, to indicate whether a, a relationship with a student is a positive one? Think about three that stand up, that stand in your mind. 
And then we're gonna go again to our menti.com and use that code 128006. And then it's gonna, it should give you three, uh, oh, it's giving you one, oh, sorry share, about that. Share your screen, Angelica. Yeah, to, oh, I'm not sharing? No. When we did the breakout rooms, when we come back, you have to share your screen again. Oh, okay. Oh, I, okay. I see her screen. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It says that I'm- Thank you, Maria. I'm not seeing your screen. Okay. Is everybody able to see my screen? Um, no, okay. that says no. I see English I see. learners do you have? Huh? Oh. It, it says how oh. many English learners do you anticipate? Oh, that's, that's the wrong one then. Yeah. Uh, there you go. See. Yeah. There you go. Should, there you go. <laughs> you know what? It, it should be this one here. So I'm not sure about the, hold on. Let me go and see what the, the code is there for that one. Oh, well, I already see some in there. No. Are you guys are right yes. them. So happy, openness, connected. Very good. Yeah. Thank you for being patient, patient with, with me and on the, this technology adventure <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'm learning also. <laughs> Okay. We were using WebEx before this, so this is our yeah. Zoom trial with yeah. you guys. <laughs> so a lot of good words that are coming in in terms of that, you know, participation, smiles, trust, positive communication, hard work, a lot of good, good, good words in there. Comfortable. So conversations and comfortable participation is a big one. So keep coming, keep those words coming in. Okay, so it looks like participation is a big one. And that is truly, truly important. So keep coming uh, with your three words, but now I'm gonna take us back to the PowerPoint so we can continue. So it looks like participation is a big, big important one for all of us. So um, I'm gonna share with you some characteristics of, of teacher-student relationships. And uh, the first one talks about the teacher empathy. So really understanding the situation where your students are, where they've been and what they're ready to do. And then being unconditional, like in conditional positive uh, in terms of being warm, you know, the next one is about being genuine. Um, us ourselves uh, having that self-awareness. Are we really being genuine when we speak to our students? Um, also about the non-directivity, um, student initiated and student regulated activities. And you're gonna see some examples of, of that as well. And the last one's so important because you, you talked about participation. So encouraging um, of critical thinking for our students as opposed to traditional memory emphasis. So getting away a lot of that, the road memorization, but more participating in the group um, and uh, hearing from them as well. And so our next slide, we, we have them all um, here for you, but we also started a list for you with suggestions. And then notice that the last bullet is blank because we want you guys to add more to the list or cross out some that you don't agree with. So for instance, with teacher empathy, you know, maybe offering office hours if the students do need that for that academic support uh, under unconditional positive regard, you know, maybe providing polls for your students so that you more or less see their responses. And we're trying to model here today. So we've used two Mentimeters for you. So you see what that looks like. In terms of genuine, being genuine, you know, the first one talks about dress and groom professionally. You know, you, they want to see their teacher, you know, like, like they always see them every day. Um, and then not, the non-directivity, um, notice how the second one talks about uh, the use of sharing decision-making about curriculum with students. So, you know, making sure that they know what they're able to do and, and, and letting them do that in their groups. The critical thinking is the last one, which is important. I know the last bullet talks about including choice and relevance into the assignments and the projects. 
and, and also including open-ended questions where the, it lends them to really, really participate and discuss. So those are just some examples, but we invite you to start making your own list in these separate uh, categories. There was a, the book talked about uh, an interview that they did. Uh, they interviewed a science teacher and this teacher was so, is so popular and um, students really rate him very high. So they said, why do you, why do you students rate you so high? So he talked about how he does take time, make sure that he knows his students, that he works on that relationship with each of them and, and that um, he tries to earn their trust so that when students, you know, if they make a mistake, they can still take risks and know that that's how we learn. Um, and then starting every session with a check-in um, so they know that he's there for them. And also himself talking about the challenges and mistakes that, that he's made while teaching online. So making them see that, hey, we're, we're human beings as well. You might have students that are hard to reach maybe through online learning. So we suggest that you identify two to three students that you're already noticing that may need that extra support and that you want to target to increase that positive attention. And then maybe record on, a, on maybe a little graph like this one and ask yourself these questions, you know, about the greeting the student by name and, and so on. You can read the rest of them, but maybe how many times did you call on the student in a positive way during, during the session? Did you pay him a compliment? So anyway, there's more there that you can, you can kind of get ideas, but the main thing is identifying those students that are gonna need that extra attention on, on how to reach them. So Rosemary wants to share with you, uh, how do you plan to know your students? There's an activity called Know My Name, Know My Story. Yes, yeah, so Santa Clara County Office of Ed led that initiative of Know My Name, Know My Identity campaign, and the link is there, so you can get involved with that with your students. It's a fun way to get them to learn about themselves and the students learn about each other as well. And then there's some other links on there as well um, on getting to know, because how well do you know your students, the students' background? especially now that they're not in your classroom physically for some of you or some of you are maybe going to hybrid but um, even in this distance learning you are their teacher they're looking to you for direction still they still remember that feeling so getting to know them is going to be very crucial at this time definitely yes thank you rosemary so that's okay so we have demetrius devonport who talks about how uh, on the importance of building that relationship. And he's, he's talking about pretty, uh, pretty um, important things. Hello, my name is Demetrius Davenport and I am Dean of Students at Health Sciences High School. Um, I'm discussing today the importance of teacher-student relationships and in the process of um, doing my, my uh, daily and weekly check-ins. Um, as you can see here, I have two computers. It's not because I'm some big businessman or anything like that. Uh, one computer um, I have for uh, my college student check-ins. The other computer is for um, students that um, have carried incompletes uh, for a certain, a certain period of time. And um, they need a little bit of extra love and, and you know extra extra support i think that in times like we are in now it's crucial um for educators um to maintain um relationships but it's it it, it allows them to build those relationships um at a stronger level during times like this um this is you know us putting our money where our mouth is pretty much, you know, during the year when you're at school, you're able to uh, get a visual of, you know, when a student is upset, you get a visual of when a student has, you know, switched personalities or something like that. And you can, you're able to have those authentic conversations, but 
it's more difficult when you know you're you're separate and you're at home. So times like this, when you're able to check in, a student realizes that they see that Mr. or Mrs. So and So, they truly do care about me. I got my phone here. This is a very important piece of the job in getting in contact and making sure that um, I'm, I'm maintaining relationships. So um, for the sake of the video, I'm not gonna you know uh, show the kid's name or anything like that. But I'm just check in and, and, and get a temperature for you know how this individual is doing um, and then tie in the academics at the end. Just just wanted to see how you were doing. Why are we, it, it doesn't need to always be business. <laughs> Every, okay, yeah, everything's good. How's, how's mom, how's dad? Look, all I wanna see is effort. I wanna see that you are attempting to, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to see that, you know, you, you, you're you attempting to, to succeed when it comes to this. So look, today, I want you to take the day to relax. Don't worry about it. Let's tackle it tomorrow and I'll, I'll be available. Uh, let's go with after, um, let's go one o'clock. When you have built relationships and everything like that, you, you know, um, what different families are going through, different students are going through. You know um, whether or not you need to come strong with the, the academic approach and discuss that, or if you need to just emotionally check in with that individual. And that is what uh, you just witnessed when it came to that. Okay, so that was a great example. I love how he modeled the actual conversation with the students, just to illustrate that for you. We have another one, but we'll leave that for you to look at. And he also talks about the check-in with the students. And how are you guys feeling? Do you need a two-minute stretch now? Rosemary, what do you, what do you see? You, can you do your uh, emojis or thumbs up or down? I'm looking. Mm -hmm. If you do need that two minute stretch, we have the, a little go noodle video if you want to dance to put loose. If not, we can keep going. Let us some know. people put thumbs I up. Need some thumbs up. They, they want the stretch or keep yeah, going? Yeah, they want the stretch. Want the stretch, okay. Yes. So we'll put the timer for two minutes and we'll go ahead and, and try to stretch. <laughs> Yes. 
two minutes. So hopefully you got to stretch, dance with, with our, our wonderful kids that were on there too. So, all right. So we'll keep going. Make sure you put your questions in the chat if we haven't addressed them yet. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get into the instruction. How do you plan instruction for, for um, our English learners? Take yes. away, Rosemary. The fun stuff of planning, the lesson planning that we do on our couches, in front of the TV, maybe in bed, all the things that happen after our hours of work, right? We're still working. So, or are you falling asleep with your laptop in your arms some nights, right? So, I remember those nights very clearly. So, next slide, please, Angelica. So, most of these you've already seen, um, the sample tools. I think most of them you should be familiar with by now. Um, so, how's planning going for you so far? I'm sure since March or April, you've seen a lot of these, again, the tools that have been listed and you could add to the list, but have you thought of aligning those tools specifically to the functions and types of engagement opportunity that you're planning for? Like the finding the information and the sample tool that you can use for that, or using information, how you're addressing that with students, creating information, sharing information, so actually being intentional in what you're using for the engagement opportunities that you're seeking from your students. And the next slide. So as you're planning for engagement, you have your three dimensions of engagement there. There is no learning without engagement. Remember the distance learning playbook. So we're using a lot of things from here as, um, as resources for you. And all of these are also in the drive. So please go ahead, if you need the worksheets, you can. So, sorry, I was looking at the chat as well. Okay. Engagement historically has been understood across the three dimensions here, behavioral, cognitive, and emotional. So most of these things, again, you're pretty familiar with behavior, um, what you see. And so if you look at these, if you look at the cognitive one, how students self-regulate is one that you want to pay attention to. So students can self-regulate by planning. You notice that they're monitoring their progress, they're setting goals for themselves, and are active in solving problems. And remember to pay attention to the emotional, especially during this time. Students' sense of belonging and affinity towards classmates contribute to the level of engagement. So if you're calling names out or things like that, um, if they don't ever hear their names, some of the tips that Angelica had, uh, mentioned before, if they don't hear it, they feel like they don't exist and so the contribution or the engagement is going to be less. Next slide. So as we're planning for instruction, remember you the teacher are the expert. So how are we using what we already know and designing meaningful learning experiences during distance learning and hybrid models. So the teacher's clarity of organizing lessons, clarity of explanation, clarity in the examples used, and guided practice, as well as the teacher's clarity in the assessment of the student's learning is what drives our instructional decisions as teachers. So remember, you already have this in your toolbox. So the purpose purpose of learning, as you see there in the center, helps us make decisions out the, about how we uh, use the instructional minutes. Now that we're very limited and we can't take those bird walks as we used to be able to do, as we think about our plans for instruction, we must consider the strategic use of demonstrating and collaborating and coaching and facilitating. So as you see in our graphic, uh, the little pinwheel there, this is even more crucial for our English learners because they don't have time for us to guess on things. Too much lecture and too much worksheets that were not tailored to students' needs, but rather what we think is that they need is not effective in either environment, face-to-face -face or in distance learning. So again, this worksheet here can help you plan or if you're an administrator, you can 
um, send the, share the resources with your teachers. Our next slide there. So the key considerations for supporting English learners and online instruction. We wanted to give Sobrato early academic language model, SEAL, and Heather Skibbons for sharing this wonderful resource. And you can click on the link on the slide if you want to read it in detail. We did conduct a webinar back in April that addressed all of these in detail. Next slide. So when thinking about your lessons online and delivery strategies, use Common Core standards and ELD standards as part of your key lesson design. Both standards we know work in tandem, and as Dr. Kate Kinsella has said, you will be able to enable your students to use English purposefully, interact in meaningful ways, and understand how English works. So if you're familiar or you're well-read in your ELD standards, you'll be just fine incorporating these into your lessons. And on the next slide here, remember as you're planning for instruction, refer to your ELD standards and pay attention to the proficiency level descriptors. Provide an overview of the stages of English language development through which English learners are expected to progress as they gain increasing proficiency in English as a new language. So this one shows that according to the, the abilities across the continuum, identifying what ELs know and what they can do at early stages. And then upon exit from each proficiency level, as you see, emerging, expanding, and bridging. So those are things to pay attention to when you get your roster to look at what levels they're in. And these descriptors are intended to be used as a guide for teachers and curriculum developers to provide ELs with targeted instruction in English language development, as well as differentiated instruction in academic content areas. I don't know if there's any questions or anything, Angelica or Maria in the chat. I don't. No it, questions, so. just okay. um, comments. Oh, good. About, yeah. Good comments. So, and we've gone to, oh, so like I told you, the, the links are there for you to go into whatever we put on screen, the links are there live. So if you touch on it, it's, as Angelica demonstrated, <laughs> you can go right to it. And this is something that, thank you, Angelica. And so this is something that was created by teachers from smarteld.com. And um, so just to see what, your ELs can do, what are my language expectations for the ELs at those proficiency levels. And again, the second column there, um, Wida, and Helica was explaining that to me the other day. <laughs> I was like, where did that come from? And then Helica oh. said she's worked with that before. Oh, be uh, so just so that you won't confuse yourself, uh, the main thing to look at is all the way to your left, which are the LPAC proficiency levels. Don't, don't use the, the, the WIDA because those are used in other states. So just focus on California, which are the LPAC proficiency levels, okay? And this, this page here, the one that's created by, so if you go to smarteld.com, they, or the link that's, when you touch the live link, it takes you straight to this, uh, it's a Google Doc that you can actually use. And then the next slide, so, as we're thinking about all our proficiency levels and so forth, um, we want to model for our students through demonstrating, as you remember your pinwheel. So it's especially critical for our English learners that we are modeling. Remember direct instruction, think alouds, work samples, the worked out samples, lectures and sharing lessons are all types of instructional models that you have in your toolbox already. So this is another one, if you haven't heard of it, or if you have already, bear with us. So think along is also a strategy for instruction. So providing English learners several scaffolds will ensure success and achievement of the task assigned. Again, the planned think along is there for you. Um, the, what it's kind of basically about, it's listed in the bullets there you can read. And in the playbook, um, it also mentioned about the use of the first person language and second person language, how you're using them, and how to be aware when 
you're speaking or modeling for English learners as you walk them through an activity. So this is a time when they will hear you think out loud and learn from you on how to to think through those processes and those strategies or tasks. Definitely. Okay. And then our sentence frames. So if you're familiar with ELD and all of that, we remember how important sentence frames are for our English learners. So on this um, slide here, it's a uh, provided by Elizabeth Jimenez Salinas, and she's also a consultant that's worked with this. Just reminding that sentence frames provide a planned, intentional, scaffolded, supportive model for growing academic language and practicing speaking in complete sentences. Remember, the modeling piece is huge for our English learners. They take into account the differing levels of students' English uh, proficiency and provide a model for them to grow so their language level does not remain static. As various students respond with their answers, students are also hearing the frame again and again, which helps solidify the usage. And so uh, remember, the, some people say, hey, this is good for everybody. It's good for all students. But remember when we think about universal design for learning and things like that I love how they said it's good for all students but it's necessary for some and for our English learners this is necessary to some certain students with IEPs this is necessary so as I'm talking about IEPs in your drive we also did put the special ed guide uh, for English learners with um, IEPs and I think Angelica if you uh, we have PDs with that right Coming up yes, in there's a PD in January that's coming up. It'll be a two-day. Yes, we can include the flyer in the folder too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so providing students with uh, time for collaborating. So this one is the text rendering protocol strategy and I will let the video play. Okay. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, we just got done reading We Refugees by Benjamin Zephanie. And again, I wanted you all to think about as you're reading that poem, what is it about where we come from that shapes who we are? So as we get into our narrative writing unit, you kind of have some ideas about what it is that has shaped who you are now, okay? So we're gonna get into our text rendering protocol. Um, as a reminder, there are going to be about three different rounds. The first round, I want you all to share a sentence which you are already tasked with during our first read. The second round, you all are gonna share a phrase. Then the third round, I want you to think of a word, okay? And the protocol for this, once you share, I want you to explain to the group why it is that you pick that sentence, that phrase, or that word, okay? And before you go into that breakout session, I need each group um, to make sure that you make somebody a scribe, so that will be the person that's going to share out when we come back, and also going to be the person that writes down your sentences, your words, and your phrases, so that way we have something to talk about once you come back, all right? So this first round, again, once you all get in there, you're gonna have about five minutes. I want you all to share your sentence and why you picked it, all right? So you all have five minutes, go ahead and go. Okay, welcome back. So we're gonna do our second round now. In the second round, I want you to share a phrase. So again, not quite as long as a sentence, picking a few words, same protocol as before. You're gonna share your phrase, why you chose it, the scribe within your group is going to write that down, and then we come back after the five minutes, we're going to have a discussion, and the scribe will share out to the class what it was that you all talked about. All right, so go ahead and go. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome you all back for our third and final round. As a reminder, in this one, we are just sharing a word. You will have five minutes again. If you need to utilize that time to really pick a word that stuck out to you, that is totally fine. Scribes, please make sure that you are taking these words down. Everybody's been doing a great job so far. And when we come back, you will share out those words. We'll have a discussion. And Scribe, don't forget to make sure that you share why those, that person chose it, because I think in that it's a very powerful conversation. Okay? So I'm going to give you all five minutes. Go ahead and go. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the last part that we're going to do. I just want us to have a quick discussion. This will be about 10 minutes or so. What are some things that, are, that we're thinking? What are some ideas that we got from the poem that maybe we didn't have before? And I also want us to, to, to talk about why was this so powerful? What was so powerful about sharing a word or sharing a phrase 
or picking a sentence? Did you gain insight from your classmates in those breakout sessions based on this protocol? Okay, so again, these are the steps that he just talked about on the video. And this book, um, the playbook for distance learning is, has so many more videos and examples with everything they talk about, um, learning students' interests and things like that. So we're just kind of giving you just a little bit, the taste of what's in there. So if you do want to invest in the book, I, I thought it was great. And um, I even got the electronic copy. So on the next slide, let me say good time here. So resource here is the Internet Reciprocal Teaching Dialogue Rubric. Now, um, when you're thinking about this, do your students know how they are doing when they are asked to complete a task? And when they complete the test, do they still, do they have an idea if they did well or not? So again, with the distance learning, we're able to provide some additional scaffolds and no one in their class needs to know. As we all know, the great feeling of feeling successful when you're around your peers um, and you know something that you had to research and everything that you're talking about as you've known it the whole time, that's the kind of feeling that the, when you do the small group or you do the breakout rooms and you go into a group and you give them some background or the pre-teaching that happens that helps our English learners. So this one, if you'd give, uh, if you're looking at the bullets there, it goes into detail in the book and uh, the strategy, the reciprocal teaching strategy right there and how you can use this rubric on a collaborative task. So the students are assigned a comprehension strategy such as questioning, clarifying, summarizing, pre or predicting. You share documents with the class. The students schedule their reading and discussions. The students can video record their conversations and teacher can send some or all students a document with a voice recording, again, scaffolding for those students. And then teacher provides feedback using the rubric. This is just one example. There are several other examples. Next slide. So there are samples and links in your drive that focus on integrated and designated lessons. Remember, we're still planning our lessons to have this in place for English learners. Uh, there is this, uh, I think on the slide, I don't know if it came off the slide there or if it's on another one, but we, there is um, the San Juan USD. They have, they're providing the lessons, I think I put on the LPAC slide. But if you look in the folder, it gives you plenty of lessons for designated DLD. And I'm not sure, it depends on your district on how they've assigned minutes for this for you. Okay. And the coaching and facilitation during designated, you can, oh, there is a video on this as well, but on the slide here, you can schedule virtual small group during breakout room time, meet with the group based on their identified learning needs. These are all just um, examples here. Ask authentic questions, use one of the engagement uh, tools in small groups such as Padlet. Padlet. So as you know, in Padlet, you don't have to see the name. And um, I think someone told me also that there is a profanity um, one that if it, it won't allow profanity to be written in Padlet. So I thought that was a good tool in there. Um, but if we can play the video and look at it, it'll go more into this, okay. an example of this. So I remember being a new teacher, brand new, and having nothing be more awkward than trying to provide wait time after asking. Uh -oh. And then we immediately feel compelled uh, to fill the void with our own responses, which inevitably trains them that all they have to do is wait us out. Um, and let's, let's be real, this doesn't ever get much less awkward. Uh, we just kind of get a little bit better at tolerating it. Um, and, you know, it's a requirement for shifting the cognitive load from um, us to them. So we, we recognize that we need, to, we need to provide this wait time. And if anything has been made more awkward by this
the reality is that hiding has become incredibly diverse. Uh -oh. Thanks, Thanks like frozen, like huh? <laughs> Want to leave it for them to finish, or you want me to try and see? And it just kind of seems to raise the social stakes. And so, okay, while can... I'm really, really good at asking unanswered questions um, to little muted black boxes that just have little names in them, and there are a couple of things that I've started to realize seem to generate more valuable discourse. Um, and in some cases, this actually means just simply generating discourse, period. Um, so here they are, it's five separate things. The first one is to prime students for questions um, that I'm gonna ask by activating their prior knowledge, uh, refreshing academic and content vocabulary, and providing visual cues. So sometimes this means maybe I'm searching Google images while uh, talking through the results. Maybe I'm graphing something live on Desmos or another digital graphing calculator or simulator. Um, and, or maybe I'm drawing something out on my sketch pad uh, that I have here and um, just kind of talking through what I'm labeling, talking through um, uh, concepts and the vocabulary involved. Um, I'm always really careful to use a combination of the precise language, in my case of mathematics, um, but also coupled with kind of um, layman descriptions, um, just to activate connections that students might have. And I always point out redundancy in terms. And so again, in my, in my content of mathematics, uh, when we're talking about horizontal asymptotes, I point out that we're also talking about in behavior what the textbook might call long run behavior. Um, it's the same thing as the limit as x approaches infinity. Um, in layman terms, it's what's the, what is the function doing as x goes on forever to the right? Just, just as a, an example of this kind of redundancy of terms and language. Uh, something else that I do, the second point is I try to build and promote student agency through open-ended preferential questions. So students, I find, are, are often far more willing to respond when it's clear that there's no like single one right answer. There's a safety in kind of just going for it. In mathematics, there are often multiple routes uh, to solving a given problem. Um, sometimes there might be preferential approaches to necessary procedures involved. Um, and I just try to make this choice as explicit as possible. I try to model my own decision making and justification as I go. Uh, and I also try to demonstrate excitement at alternative viewpoints. I, I thank students for bringing up something that's different than maybe the way that I do it uh, because they're making our conversation richer. Uh, I, I recognize that few things that I do generate more student ownership than when I ask them the question, whose map is this? Uh, and so Helica, we can stop it here. What I try okay. to do to generate okay. conversation and with questions. Okay. So again, you can go through this. Um, it gives you the different types of cues. So again, what you're trying to do here is eliminate the crick it's called cricket reducers right so you're sitting there the wait time is hard especially online and even when you hold your own uh, pds you notice that you have to wait and people get once they get comfortable it's when it gets going so again using this as a cricket reducer using those types of cues and keeping it different for your students as well right and feedback to students, which is very important. So after all doing all these lessons, what you're asking yourself when you're thinking about feedback that you are hoping for, uh, can I tailor my feedback procedures to distance learning environment, which you already have in place? How can I enhance feedback using social emotional learning? How do I identify formative evaluation techniques to check for understanding in virtual settings? Can I identify features on my learning management system that enhance summative evaluation experiences? Am I able to determine the feasibility and authenticity of my current grading procedures in distance learning? So again, you have that worksheet there in your drive as well. We can go to the next slide. And as we're talking about this, we're getting students, our English learners, ready for the LPEC. Um, however that looks in your district right now, it may vary from district to district as they're working on things with LPAC. Um, creating the intentional lessons aligned with LPAC task types. So, so this is what I was talking about with San Juan USD. In the drive, there are actual lessons on speaking, listening, reading, and writing in there. And then also uh, tools for teachers and smarter balance. There's actually lessons listed for you 
um, it's amazing step-by-step -step lessons that you can use if you've are, if you haven't explored it explore that link right there the smarter tools for teachers it went live this summer I believe so and then next slide and so your whole purpose of focusing and giving scaffolds for our English learners is for them to be reclassified and here are the reclassification criteria for you here listed and um, it is going to change uh, now that we are things were put on hold uh, with Optel and so forth so but this is what it looks like right now and then uh, you'll be getting direction from your districts as well okay thank you Rosemary yes um, Mary, yeah Maria anything in the chat that we need to address before we go into the last section now Yes, they want um, somebody put where can they find the text rendering protocol? It's oh on the slide as well as um, in the book actually goes into detail and the video after it explained, but it's it's actually just the slide there. Okay, so maybe in the background you can work on that and I can keep going. Yes, I will put it. Okay. So, so we get to the most important. I know our students are very important, but also our teachers are tremendously important because without our teachers, there's no instruction um, and we can't, we can't go on. So taking care of you. So the first thing that we want to show you is the, the uh, research and the information from Karen Gray. And she talks about the oxygen mask theory, how to take care of everyone. So if you notice that it says that if you pass out before you put your oxygen mask on, then you aren't able to help anyone else. And so this applies to our everyday life. Um, when we do, when we do not take time to take care of ourselves, then we start feeling fatigue, illness, stress, we go through mood swings, and then we're not able to help either our family or our students. So it's very important that we focus on our, on our health. Um, so the first consideration is just a list of things that you might want to, to keep in your dedicated workspace you know, making sure that you choose a, a favorite place or a good place in your home that works for you. You know, maybe a window where it gives light to you where you can, the kids can, the students can see you in camera. Maybe also have um, some uh, agreements with your family. You know, the time that you're teaching, you know, don't come into this area or, you know, or not. Um, and so maybe also in that little area, hang familiar items, you know, where students see your background, they, they, they know that, oh, that has to do with what she or he had in the classroom last year or something like that. Um, and so some teachers opt for stand-up desks. I know that those are pretty pricey, but it's your choice if you want to do that. That way you don't sit all day or for a long period of time. Uh, some teachers find that they can project their voice better that way. Um, and, you know, make sure you have all your supplies nearby. So we really have a, a very short video. It's about less, I think it's less than a minute. Just a teacher showing her workspace. I do have a designated workspace, so let's go to it. And we are here. You can see I have a really big desk but I'm able to keep a ton of different material on. I have extra pens as well as post-it, but the most important items will be my laptop, my agenda, because I like to create a lot of checklists, and my notepad. I'm attending a lot of Zoom meetings, so I want to be able to take notes and refer back to them, but I do my best to keep it organized, and this is my workspace. Okay, so that's an example. So you might want to just Think about your workspace and what do you want to have there right away for you. Um, another thing that we recommend is setting routines in place for your own, for yourself. Create a morning routine. Do you want, like to walk in, in the early morning before you start your day? Make sure that you have that time to eat your breakfast, that you're not rushing to the computer, you know, and trying to eat at the same time. You got to just kind of relax and then maintain your regular hours. Try to mirror the schedule that you usually have during the day. Put yourself in uh, your lunch breaks, you know, your recess breaks, uh, short little stretch breaks that you can do, little coffee breaks. 
Um, and then you might want to end your day with a, with a routine as well. Do you want to write a summary email to your students? Maybe you want to take some time to meditate, to give, your give yourself some time also to maybe read a, a, a good book or just start, you know, something else that you would like to, but just making sure that you're taking care of your well, of your well being. This is a little template that you can use just to write down your ideas of maybe your morning routine, your breaks, and your routine at the end of the day. Just ideas for you there. And then it's important that you also have your socializing opportunities. Make sure that you do take that time to socialize with your colleagues, whether it's on the phone, whether it's through Zoom, whether it's through Google Hangout. Make sure that you keep talking to, to, to your colleagues, to adults. Uh, maybe committing yourself to talking to someone outside your home every day. I know a teacher who makes it a point that, hey, as soon as recess comes in the schedule uh, during the virtual instruction, he gets his coffee and he calls uh, one of his colleagues and he does that every day and did they just they, they chat about what's going on that just keeps him comfortable and, and keeps his sanity <laughs> um, and then supporting your your well-being uh, make sure that you you manage your stress level don't let it get out of hand we know that that these times are are pretty difficult for all of us you know we're all learning with you as well so look into apps that are available like we know that there's calm there's Pacifica there's pray.com so you choose whatever is going to take care of, of your your stress level and your well-being make sure that you eat healthy you know, stay away from the junk food, you know, make sure that you do a balanced meal, put your greens in there, your fruits, your protein, maybe invest in a protein shake in the morning. And if anything, stay hydrated with your water. As you can see, this is an example for me. I don't know if this is my water jug and it says bottle, bottled joy. That keeps me hydrated and it, it works wonders for me. It keeps, keeps my, my energy going as well. Make sure that you exercise regularly. Choose something. Do you want to walk, run, yoga, cardio, whatever you're into. Make sure that you keep that in there. Whatever you do, your sleep is important. Make sure that you get your eight hours of sleep and that you go to bed at a regular time. Turn off your screen time one hour before you go to bed. Maybe drink a calming tea for, for, for you to start feeling relaxed and go to bed comfortable, okay? Now, something else that has worked for other teachers and educators, they have uh, committed to a partner. They have a commitment partner into implementing the plan. And so uh, make sure that you do that. Uh, I know for a fact that some, I keep some people accountable in terms of our water. I text them and say, make sure you're drinking water. So. <laughs> Now, there are warning signs. We wanna, you know, if you start feeling isolated, if, if you start isolating yourself, so if you, you know, any of these that are warning signs, we wanna make sure that you are aware of and that reach out to your HR and to make, to make sure that you have assistance because this has to do with compassion fatigue um, and, and compassion fatigue, as you, as you can see, is a, is a combination of physical, emotional, and spiritual depletion, and it's associated with the trauma-related uh, work we do with others. Um, so that's very significant. So, you know, pay attention to that. Here's a little inventory that you might want to look at. Hopefully you never get to that. That's why we're saying take care of yourself first. You have access to that. Here's also an evaluation that as you go through the factors on the left side, you can see where more or less, where are you at? Is there an area that you really need to focus on? And this is remember again, for your well-being, for you. Okay, uh, we're gonna quickly just tell you that we have resources here. Um, you can always go, you know, but we have the, the guidance for CDE for ELD. We have all these resources here with all the links at the bottom where it takes you to all of these documents. Uh, Stronger Together is the guidance that was put out by the state on reopening schools. And then here's the link to the national standards for, for uh, online instruction. This is what they look like so that you take your time going through them. 
and seeing how they relate to your work. These are all the uh, webinars that we're recommending. We have the, the live links in there. Depending on the topic that you're interested, you can always go and they, they've been recorded. So you can always go back there and, and see them. Okay, and model, model, model. We know that that's so important. Okay, we also included the assessment timeline just so that you're aware of it. And we really, really want to ask for your feedback. This is an idea that we had that we thought was needed out there for, for all of our educators. If you can please go to this link um, and give us some feedback and tell us how you liked it. Or you can enter it in the chat as well. We would love to hear from you because that helps us grow and get better every day. With that in mind, we want to take, uh, we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for coming and attending this webinar. And here are our, our contact information. If you can't get a hold of myself and Rosemary, we also have Maria Guzman, who's our office specialist, and she will always make sure that uh, how to reach us. Make sure that you follow us on Twitter as well. We're going to be posting some of these slides um, on Twitter announcing our workshop. So thank you, thank you. Um, anything else that we need to address in the chat? We will be sending the presentation to you as well. Anything? There's a lot of thank yous, Angelica. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. We thank you. Thank